I'm sorry I can't speak right now everything in Latvia, but I think if we'll keep in the same speed, within the next two years I'll be able to speak in Latvian. <coughs> so I will try to do this in English so far. And I would like to be very short. I don't know how many of you know about Lina Sagro, about our business. So I we have um, quite long presentations and I will try to make um, maybe my speech. No, not go very deeply in each slide. You can download the slides and see if you would like later on. <coughs> and I would like to focus on uh, our investments maybe, maybe in Latvia and in our future and how we see uh, ourselves. And uh, firstly, maybe I would like uh, to say a couple words about agribusiness, <coughs> agribusiness of the Baltics, who are not familiar with what it is agribusiness. <coughs> uh, this season, uh, in agribusiness, we have not calendar years, we have fiscal uh, season years. Uh, therefore, our financial year ends of June and starts July. Tomorrow we'll have annual shareholders meeting. <coughs> so if uh, some of you are already shareholders, maybe you know our agenda. And uh, this season uh, in, in Baltics, we have very good harvest. In Lefina, we have approximately 5 million tons of various cereals. In Latvia, approximately 3 million tons. In Estonia, maybe one and a half. And uh, maybe this is excep exceptional season regarding their uh, uh, <clears throat> the tonnage, how much we're harvesting, uh, but every year uh, the all Baltic countries, especially Lithuania and Latvia, uh, they are increasing in their <clears throat> size of their equitable area and uh, how much we are able to export and uh, to harvest the grains. Uh, so in both we have 9 million, 8 million tons and uh, <clears throat> half, of, half of that are exported. So it's like 4 million tons of various greens are exported from Baltics, uh, especially from Lithuania and Latvia, Estonia, mainly <coughs> because of their size they are consuming internally. So Latvia and, Estonia and Lithuania are exporters, 50%. And uh, 4 million tons are exported, and this is a very big figure. We, together with Latvia, number three country in the Europe regarding their even the annual <coughs> And the sum of the amount, how much we're exporting. The first come uh, France and the Germany definitely they export 16 or 20 million tons. We export four, but we're number three in Europe Union. So actually this is very uh, big uh, figure and a very interesting figure and very important, I would say, for the development of all agribusiness of our countries. And in the future, because of their uh, steady increase in yields and steady increase in arable area. In Lefina, arable area increases approximately by 100,000 hectares per annum and in Latvia around 30,000. And uh, I think uh, within the next even 10 years in the future, we'll, we will be able to increase this arable land. So adding on top additional quantities of grains and uh, uh, taking into account and into consideration also our climate, which is actually favorable for the growing uh, several um, cereals like wheat and rapeseed. Uh, I think that the Baltics, Lithuania and Latvia will be very known and already are known in international markets with his green, with the name of uh, Baltic Green. Even we are calling them Baltic Green. So I am proud to represent Lina Sagro Group, which is uh, started uh, 25 years ago their uh, first uh, vessels uh, of export. And uh, right now um, we are exporting more than 260 uh, vessels per annum and uh, loading not 5,000 tons of small vessel by, but like 60, 65,000 tons of Panamax type vessels. And uh, if you would see in the life uh, these big vessels, or if you'll be able to sail in their seas and, and see these vessels in the, in the sea, they are very, very, let's say, in, 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 how to say, big, very big impression. And uh, so our countries are very strong in agribusiness, and uh, we are proud to be the part of it. And uh, in the future, I think that agribusiness definitely will remain fundamentals. And uh, our countries, having all these uh, abilities, they will be the export countries and uh, well-known in the markets. 
So Lina Sagro, <coughs> what we are doing, everything we are doing, what is related with agribusiness. So uh, we are exporting the grains, we are selling all needed products to the farmers, uh, we operate our own elevators network, we have own farms, and uh, recently, one year ago, uh, we purchased uh, uh, Latvian uh, poultry business, uh, two, actually two companies, Kekava and Lielzeltini. So uh, this is how we look, this is our structure, 38 companies, more than 2,000 employees. And uh, the bottom-up Linus Agro Group is holding company and it is listed. And beneath, beneath we have small subholdings, uh, and each subholding controls uh, particular companies and particular businesses. If we take Linus Agro AB, this is our mother company, a trading company, the biggest company in terms of the revenues. Uh, we are controlling Linus Agro, a Danish company, and Sia Linus Agro a Latvian company in Yelgava based, where we are doing the same business like in Lithuania, uh, and then we're controlling elevators. Uh, this season we already opened an elevator in Latvia in Yelgava, and we are the first company from Lithuania opened an elevator. And uh, because we believe uh, that uh, our, let's say, presence and our market share, especially in Latvia, uh, have very big chances to grow further and uh, uh, we think that Latvia and we consider Latvia our home market and uh, definitely we would like to uh, have a market share uh, as we have in Lithuania. In Lithuania we control approximately 35% uh, of all uh, greens export and being the number one in terms of the size so uh, our aim would be to be number, I would say, top three companies in Latvia in agribusiness, despite very strong competitors like Latraps and Scandinavian companies. We are a business company, we are not cooperative, so from that hence, uh, sometimes it's not easy to compete with cooperatives in agribusiness, but uh, our belief is that, you know, futures definitely should belong to the business-oriented people for many various reasons. Uh, so we are really, leader, uh, really the leader in the Baltics and we are the largest company in agribusiness in terms of the revenues, in terms of the quantity traded of various products. And we are number 375 a company uh, in Central and Eastern Europe uh, uh, in terms of the revenue size. So actually uh, it's quite a big achievement. And for us, it's very important to have big scale, big uh, revenues, as our business is not so funny <laughs> like previous um, guys are, are not very profitable. We are doing, uh, our, uh, we are doing uh, and we need to compete in their businesses where gross margins vary approximately to 8% and EBITDA margin around 5% and net profit margin around 2%. But this is their... Uh, the, their, the situation of uh, agribusiness in, in the world markets. Uh, so uh, this is uh, some historical data of our, of our let's say, recent history since an APO. We made an APO to 2010, and uh, I would say that uh, fortunately we are, um, in reality, the, the first and the last real company which made APO in the Baltics so far. Uh, we operate in uh, five business segments, and here I would like to, to uh, stay with this slide and explain our business model um, and go maybe slightly deeper. So actually we have five business uh, segments. Uh, so the, the, the smallest one is with below 1%, it's others, so actually there is nothing left. So it's very short to, to explain. So let's start with the biggest one and the largest one in terms of their revenues and their volumes and profit contribution. Uh, this is traditional, our business mode, business segment, greens, feedstuffs, and, uh, uh, and handling. So in that business segment, we include all trading of greens and all trading of feedstuffs, also all elevators. Uh, so uh, greens uh, and feedstuffs, we need slightly to separate and divide. 
Grains are all cereals that we are sourcing and buying from Lithuania and Latvia and exporting. And feedstuffs are the sub-products or like products like uh, uh, sun cake, sunflower. So these are by-products when uh, agricultural producers are producing, let's say, from sunflower, sun, sun oil. So they have sun cake as sub-product. -sub so feedstuffs are used for feeding various uh, uh, businesses like poultry, like pig, like meat, etc. And those feedstuffs we are sourcing from for so former Soviet Union countries. So uh, we are very uh, easy in that, in meaning that we are purchasing and exporting. So feedstuffs are sourced in uh, CS countries and exported into Western Europe, primarily into Scandinavia and Norway. And uh, we are, Lina Sagra, one of the biggest exporters, for example, of feedstuffs to uh, salmon breeders in Norway. Very big uh, industry in the world. Actually, the biggest industry of salmon, uh, of salmon is in Norway. And the uh, grains uh, are exported in very big uh, Panamax type vessels and uh, they go into various directions around the world, but primarily to the South Africa and Asia. And one of our biggest uh, destinations are Saudi Arabia in, and in Iran and, uh, and uh, Israel, these kind of countries. And the grains are pure commodities. You can watch, you know, on the screen who is uh, who is following the soft commodities market, the wheat, rapeseed, the prices, etc. And they are lower in the margins. The average trading margin in uh, grains are approximately three percent gross margin. Uh, in feedstuffs, they are more profitable products, and they're, but still they are not uh, very high in profitability compared with other business segments. It's around six percent. No other, any company in the Baltics having uh, these two types of products. And this is very important because uh, you have a uh, wider product portfolio, which you can propose to your client, and you also diversify your, let's say, risk exposure. If, for example, we might have uh, bad harvest because of the bad weather in the Baltics, definitely we might suffer because of losing quantities, the farmers not raising enough grains. We have feedstuffs, so that can uh, allow us, us to be more flexible, while all our competitors, they are only focusing in Baltics in grains. <clears throat> then we have um, products and services to farming, very important and very, uh, let's say, old uh, also business segment for us. And that business segment, we include everything that we're selling to farmers, starting from seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, chemicals, agricultural uh, machinery, tractors, harvesters, combiners, all, all these kind of things. We have separate companies which are dealing in this, and uh, our business model looks very simple. We're selling to the farmer, and then during the harvest, we are taking the harvest, taking the cranes, grains from the uh, clients, from our farmers, and, and settling you know, our debts versus their harvest. <clears throat> so this is traditional and uh, fundamental uh, business activity in all agribusiness uh, uh, companies. Uh, in that business segment, we have own seed manufacturing plant in, in Lufina, and we are the largest in seed manufacturing, uh, having the largest market share. Uh, also, we have uh, a rep, uh, we have sale offices of agricultural machinery in Latvia and Estonia, and uh, we are making very heavy investments recently in Latvia and, and expanding our, let's say, presence in, in, in this in your country and uh, trying to be as much closer to the farmers as we can, com as compared with Lithuanian business model. We are representing uh, certain. Uh, big, uh, let's say, names in agricultural machinery, uh, machinery like Case uh, or Creer Neverland. So uh, having ex exclusive distribution rights of these products to the farmers. Uh, agricultural production is their third business segment, and this is our farms. We have seven farms, and all these seven farms are located in Lithuania so far. And our farm operates around 17,000 hectares, as of uh, which 7,000 are our own land. Uh, so we have our uh, agricultural uh, production. Uh, we are harvesting around 80,000 various cereals per annum. Also, we have uh, milk production. 
uh, uh, milk production accounts approximately 40% of all revenues of our farms. And we are, as unit one, the biggest raw milk supplier to their dairies in Lufina. And their fourth and very important and very interesting for us business segment is the food products, is, is nice kekovas chicken. And uh, so um, I will come later on at the end of the, uh, my presentation to this uh, business segment and explain why we invested and what we anticipate from this. So actually, this is their, our breakdown of, uh, of income and of operating profit structure. So briefly, I explained their situation. So as you see already, my mention in grain and feedstuffs products, traditional products, traditional commodities. Uh, what I would like to mention also that uh, <coughs> recently we started uh, construction uh, together with the uh, CAS terminal in Riga, uh, the terminal uh, for grain exports uh, from Latvia, we will secure our, our flow. So actually this is very important for us as for export company to have secure and steady uh, grain export through the ports. In, in Lefina we operate through Klasko having long-term agreements and securing our plot and from another hand blocking competitors. This is the same what we are doing and we will do in Riga. And in Riga actually last, no, this year we loaded in Riga first time in the history the biggest uh, vessel ever in the port regarding the grain tonnage. Uh, that, that area is quite interesting and uh, this is green plot is uh, where are located our, um, the green plot is their most uh, fertile land in Baltics, in Lufina and Latvia, you see where it goes. And there, uh, this is the network of our elevators. <clears throat> and actually in that green plot, uh, our farms are located. So we have uh, 250,000 uh, tons of storing capacity, our elevators, including uh, this year started Yelgavas elevator, sorry, Yekapils elevator. And now, uh, uh, let's see, turnover ratio of our elevators are very high compared with the competitors because our elevators actually are modern ones and their annual average <coughs> turnover ratio is two and a half times. So for elevators, it's very important to load as much as you can. So this is how the farms we are located. And there are already my mentioned figures regarding their, our <coughs> business characteristics of what we are doing in our farms. Uh, this is how we are investing and why we are having those farms, having these uh, yields. And definitely these yields you see are higher compared with average in Lufina and, and, and average in Latvia. And still, of course, Baltic yields are below the EU average in approximately 30%. But from another hand, you can't compare, let's say, yields in South uh, France or South uh, Germany because simply the better weather conditions. Uh, but still, we have uh, room to improve our yields in the Baltics. So, the food products, uh, their uh, poultry business. Uh, Poultry business, uh, um, we believe, uh, has a good potential for growth and uh, really good demand. And uh, from group perspective, uh, we, uh, we have been thinking a lot uh, where to invest, where to put the money. And uh, we are very conservative guys because we are from agribusiness, operating in the loan margins, having many risks around surrounding us. And uh, we thought that, you know, we need to invest in that place where we believe at least no better. So um, why poultry? Because poultry uses approximately 60% of their cost of goods sold are feedstuffs. And we believe that we are experts in feedstuffs. We know how to source feedstuffs. We know how to source the grains. Therefore, this is like a thing that we can control. And of course, it adds to us our synergy effect. So we think that it's a good, uh, from the vertical integration perspective, move. And uh, food products definitely is more uh, profitable than our traditional business. 
if I mentioned that uh, average gross margin in, in greens is in, in wheat is around three three percent, in feeds are five percent, then in, in in let's say food we have approximately uh, eighteen to fifteen percent. Uh, EBITDA margin could be around 10%. Definitely depends on the cycles because the poultry business also uh, is a cyclical business where uh, influences manners factors like uh, uh, grain prices, like uh, overcapacity, etc. stuff. So uh, from, this is the major fundamental things and uh, the rest we would like to do the business uh, firstly at our home, home countries like Lufin and Latvia because of the better risk control, better you know, presence of the key staff, key personnel, etc. So there is no many things to invest really and not easy to buy. And one uh, situation was uh, one and a half year ago we found that Kekawa was under restructurization and actually the company was really on there, I would say, on the bankruptcy, uh, on the bankruptcy, really, uh, we thought that this is a good uh, chance to come and to take the company to, you know, to provide the calf, cash, to provide the money, and to help company to survive, and uh, <clears throat> to have it in our portfolio. Uh, and Kekava was controlled by by a couple shareholders, uh, and one of the biggest shareholders also controlled the Bauske, but they. The LLZ and Ibauska, but they operated as separate companies uh, at that time. So we approached to the same shareholder and said, okay, guys, we would like to buy everything. And if you agree, so we had a very long process, one and a half a year of negotiations. And finally, we managed to acquire those companies. And uh, really, uh, we're very happy of this. And uh, we think that we succeeded a lot. And we really uh, succeeded for our group, and we succeeded also for people who really uh, works in those in those companies because uh, the situation was really difficult, especially in Kekava. So uh, I would say I'm really proud that we helped to survive those 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 company Kekava. And uh, looking from long term perspective, I believe that also for Lazeltini because. It, it is quite small company compared comparatively with other competitors, and uh, you know uh, to compete in that business also competition is very high. So we need to have enough cash flow and enough funds to invest, because uh, Kakawa was under invest that maybe five years. So uh, in that business you need to invest every year. Bauska was more or less okay, but still uh, the companies in order to expand, in order to propose to the market good products, quality products, efficient products, you need to invest. And if you compare with the biggest rivals, our biggest rivals, I would say, are in Lufina, Kouno Gurde, the company, uh, the group which are twice bigger in terms of the size of uh, Latvian business. Uh, so uh, those Kono Grude, I would say, maybe already are three years ahead of, of these companies. I one minute. Okay, so uh, uh, this is actually my summary what uh, what uh, what really I would like to say, and um, what is the future, especially with poultry business. In poultry business right now, we uh, have a sales around 60, 62 million euros consolidated. Uh, we have a three years uh, plan to increase the sales uh, on the count of the export up to 90 million euros. And our plan is really ambitious regarding investments. We need to invest and upgrade a lot of and to create uh, good quality of products. Uh, the figure how much we would like to invest, unfortunately, I can, I can officially announce because it varies, but it is really uh, big amounts of money it will come and already are coming into the companies. And uh, after three years, I would like to see and our management would like to see their Latvian uh, companies being uh, one of the top, let's say, efficient companies from Baltics and poultry business and having uh, one of the best uh, products available on the shelf and uh, because we are salmonella free producers and this is a swell big advantage having this uh, this let's say logo let's say and this logo helps uh, uh, to export the products into Scandinavia 
So uh, poultry business uh, also is uh, very competitive. We're facing big and severe competition from Polish producers, especially when the uh, Russian market uh, closed. So uh, next three years will be difficult, uh, not easy, in terms of the risk management, in, ter in terms of the investments we are making. But I think uh, already in the summer, I hope in the summer, you already will see uh, on the shelves of the uh, supermarkets the new products produced from uh, Kekova or Bauska product, uh, companies. So let's go, let's try, taste it, and, and buy and be our clients or insurers or, in, let's say, buying poultry. Uh, so this is, for, in short, my, my presentation. Thank you very much, Thomas.